we go. I'm filming on a new lens today that I haven't used yet. I had to ditch that Canon L series, man. It was kind of a turd, which I can't believe I'm saying about a lens that costs that much money and that I dreamed about owning for like five years before I got it. It was plasticky, no image stabilization. It just, there was some weird looks going on with certain shots that I didn't like. Ugh. So I ditched that thing and I'm on a new Sigma 24 to 70 art series right now. It's got image stabilization, which I thought I could live without with the other one. Definitely can't. It's not all plasticky. It's mostly built out of aluminum, which is nice because I drop shit all the time. And image quality wise, well, I won't know until I edit this video. So hopefully it's good. Anyways, we're not here to talk about that. Don't get me started on camera gear because I'm a nerd and I will go on forever. What we're here to talk about some four color process printing. Now I haven't really had an excuse to use this stuff yet. It's been sitting on the shelf for 99% of its life. If you remember, I don't know when it was, like a few months ago, I did use the water-based version of my four color process inks once, which was to print uh, a spot color type of design, not printing kind of what they're intended for, which worked out great. I got the effect that I was looking for. It was a cool design in the end. The people that got those shirts totally dig them. And uh, yeah, otherwise that ink has just been sitting on the shelf because I don't really have any excuse to use it. Because at this stage in my clothing brand and print shop businesses, I've kind of stopped taking on work for the print shop part of it because the brand is requiring way more of my attention and requiring more shop time than literally anyone could hire me for right now. So my focus right now is on that for the most part. And if you're familiar with my brand, you know that the designs are very bold, like two, three, four spot color designs. Half tones don't ever make their way into the mix. So other than that one design that I did, there hasn't been really any reason for these four color process inks to leave the shelf. But as for the print shop, I am still taking on work, but I'm just being very selective on what I'm taking on. I'm only taking on stuff that really catches my interest and stuff that's really kind of suiting the vibe on what I want the direction of the shop to be. Well, if you remember my friend Lee, the other Lee from a few videos ago, he started up a clothing brand uh, earlier in the year that I've slowly been helping him out with and building it up. It's called North of Nine, and if you're from where we're from, super clever name, really wish I would have thought of it. And yeah, he's been cooking up all kinds of cool ideas with that, and myself and Dan have been making the design and print work happen. Well, he's also just as into photo and video stuff as I am. As you saw, he helped me film one of the KLX build videos, and he's got a ton of photos on my Instagram that he shot for me. And so he went out and shot this photo and stuck one of the designs we did for him up on it. And man, looks super cool. And then he came to me and said, can we print this on a shirt? My response was, shit yes. I'm done all my other print work for the day now. So I figured, let's take a crack at this thing. Now, as you probably gathered, this is my first time doing this. I haven't even exposed a halftone style screen yet. Uh, so we're doing this totally brand new. So if you're expecting any kind of tutorial here today, this is not what you're looking for. This is either gonna be me triumphantly figuring it out or failing miserably. One of the two, either way, I figured it was probably a good thing to film. So let's get to work. I think my game plan here is gonna to be to start off with the C film, which is the cyan film, because it's got by far the smallest halftone dots on it. So if I get the time right for this one, I get it for all of them. Yeah. I don't want to say something stupid and claim that I got this on the first try, but from what I can tell, I, I searched around for a while for like the smallest dots that I could find, and it looked like they cleared out of the screen, so I guess I'm gonna run with that. Only one way to find out, let's expose these screens and put them on a shirt. after that clip, I'm gonna get a million questions on how I separated that stuff. And tutorials are coming. I'm gonna make them on simple spot color separations, four color process separations, and simulated process separations whenever I get the time. I'm a busy guy. And full disclosure, I actually did these screens twice. I didn't get them first try. I kinda did get it first try. They looked really good, but then I went back and looked at the positives and noticed there was some really, really, really small little half tones, like pinhole size things that you could barely even see with the magnifier. And well, I really wanted those, so I went back, redid all the screens from scratch, got them, 
They turned out, I'd say 90%. I can still probably get them a little bit better, but I think with that exposure unit and using photopolymer emulsion, I think that's probably the best it's gonna get. I definitely need an LED exposure unit, and that's hopefully gonna be my next upgrade. But anyways, let's get these suckers registered and get printing. I guess maybe there is a little piece of advice I can give you. Now normally, but not all the time, I'd say like 90% of the time, your print order should go light to dark. So in this case, it should go yellow, magenta, cyan, and then black. But when I register this type of print, I do it in reverse. And that's because the screen mesh is yellow. So if the first print you're laying down and trying to register to is yellow, you're not gonna see it through this thing, which means your registration is gonna take way longer and it's probably not gonna be all that accurate. So I start with the black so I have something solid to see through each screen with and then as I lay each color on top, you can see that color and how well it's registered against the black. And further, I will flash between each color during the registration process so that I don't pick up any ink on the back side of the screen that isn't registered to the spot that it's supposed to be because you don't want any ghosting. You don't want to be cleaning the back side of the screen too hard because these half tones can be delicate. It's just a smarter way to do it and the only thing you're sacrificing is one test print area on a junk shirt that's not gonna turn out the way it should and then you go back and do your test print the way that you're supposed to once it's all registered properly and then you're good to go. Well, I was not expecting it to go that well on the first try. Damn, even got all the detail and the little grass and sticks and shit up here. Nice. There are a couple small spots like up in here, there's some blown out stuff, but then I looked at the photo and it's actually blown out in the photo too. There's just very, very, very small detail in there that it didn't capture. So I mean, we're, we're on the money on this one. I think for next time, if I want to capture that very, very small minimalist detail, I got to crank up the LPI on it or something, or I don't know, get an LED exposure unit, use a different emulsion, something to capture those little, 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 little tiny dots or make little tiny dots, one of the two. But I mean, this, Definitely good. Honestly, I was not expecting this. I was thinking I was gonna have to go back and make new screens again and try one more time, but I mean, I'm good with this. Let's start printing these things. that went way too smoothly. I seriously had no problems, nothing I had to fix. Every print came out money. My mind's kind of blown right now. I mean, that happens to me every day with spot color stuff because I do spot color literally nonstop. But this is the first try that I've done this, so I was definitely expecting a lot more issues than I had, but really I only had to remake the screens and that was it so far, so I mean, Pretty pumped on that, but these aren't quite done yet. I still gotta print the neck labels in these suckers and another batch that I printed for them earlier today. So let's knock that out and then show you guys the finished product. That's a wrap on those. I was almost a little bit worried about the bigger sizes like the 2XL and up dwarfing that size of the image on the shirt, but nah, they're perfect. So without further ado, let's check these things out. I don't know about you, but I think that turned out pretty damn good for a first try. Not gonna lie, I was stressing about that one when I took it on, but I can't believe how smoothly that went. The end result is money, and I have a feeling that that's gonna be one of his popular shirts because when I posted it in my Insta story while I was filming this thing, my DMs blew up. Speaking of which, I linked his Instagram and website down below. 
Go follow him at least, pick something up if you can, support the homie. But yeah, man, I'm super pumped on how that turned out and now I wanna play with it even more. So I think I'm gonna have to try a few more things with it like printing on a white underbase and see how that turns out or bumping up the LPI more because I am on 305s and I know I can get away with way higher than that and I could probably pull more detail. And I might even be inspired to come up with a four color process design of my own because obviously I'm a photo nerd, I have a brand, I've got all this print stuff. So I mean, it kind of makes sense. It's funny, at the start of this video, I said I had no use for it within my brand and now my head's just turning, trying to find a use for it. But there's definitely a couple things that I wanna improve upon for next time. First, like I said, I wanna try bumping up the LPI on there, see if I can pull more detail out of it. I know it's gonna be way more of a pain in the ass to get my exposure right, so I'm really gonna have to buckle down and dial that in, but I think it would probably be the smartest move to do is see just how much detail I can pull out of this stuff. And the other thing I wanna figure out how to remedy is the first five or six prints were nowhere near as dark as the other ones. Like once I got into, I don't know, eight to 10 range, they definitely darkened up and they were consistent all the way through. But the first five or six turned out lighter than the rest and that's because I hadn't built up an ink layer on the backside of the screen yet, which something I didn't really account for. So that's something I can easily fix for next time. Probably just smash out a bunch of prints on some junk shirts first before I go into production. But I'm stoked on today. It was really cool to finally dip my toe in the four color process waters. I'm definitely gonna put a lot more time into it, perfect what I'm doing, and then I'll come back and update you guys on how that is and teach you whatever I've learned. But that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Thank you guys for watching. While you're down in that description, make sure to check out my other links down there, follow my other social medias, and we'll see you again in the next one.